and I I have a, a vague memory of this, and Wes, you may just be able to tell me, yeah, you dreamed that. That's not real. Uh, but I seem to remember going into our senior year, I think it was, Mr. Murphy, even though he wasn't the, the, the director anymore, having to have a talk with us specifically. Jared, I think you may have been part of it as well about um, you need to, to bring it down because you're scaring the, the younger kids. <laughs> And uh, because it was just an intensity that we had when it was time to practice or perform. Mm -hmm. And it's funny mm -hmm. because I actually have figured out since college that uh, I developed a nervous tick because of drumline. Uh, and and I was, I'm curious to see if, if anybody else does this. So, you know, I would get, I'd played sports. Wes touched on this on his episode, played sports growing up. So you kind of get that same mentality of like, it's game time. It's mm -hmm. go time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, late in the season, it will be cold. We're not wearing gloves. So you got to keep your, your hands warm. What you don't want to do is breathe into them because then you're putting moisture on your palms and it's going to get more cold. So what we would do is we would rub our hands together to get that friction heat. And I think over time, my brain subconsciously got into the mode of like, it's game time, focus, time to perform. And I would start rubbing my hands together to keep them dry and warm oh, wow. so they're ready to perform. And now, I mean, I can be watching a, 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 a game of any kind of sport where it's, you know, it's tense and I'll catch myself, I'll catch yeah, myself cool. rubbing my well, hands you know, together. You, you bought in faster and quicker than anybody. Yeah. I will say that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. You were all about it. Yeah. And, uh, I, and, and, and it, it was stuff like that, little fires like that where every one of you just kind of, I can't let Mark out drum me. Yeah. So and it just well, I want to well, I want to say this about the confidence and arrogance thing, and I want to kind of talk, dive into that about how to find the balance and all that. But I want to say that about you, Kevin. How you know I mentioned a father figure uh, mm -hmm. to us guys, and I think a lot of guys in their early twenties, mid late twenties, whatever, don't learn these lessons till later. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of those lessons, it's like okay, we can be confident, do what we need to do, but not try to overshadow everybody else. And I think that's something that I learned young, uh, and primarily because of you, that's a big deal. So I want to ask this, you know, confidence, arrogance, how do you find that? Because I feel like even adults in whatever field they're in, it's, it's hard to find that, to maintain that confidence, but not try to overshadow everybody else and be arrogant. How do you find the balance? You have to have a spirit of giving. What you have, you, you, you have to learn to give it away. Yeah. Okay. So, so in essence, uh, me as a player, me as a writer, me as a thinker okay i have these abilities okay so when y'all are in the line y'all probably out drum me now my hands are terrible yeah. but you know it's yeah. like we we you know and i was always drum with y'all and you know we would play these things and i would try to out chop you and then try to i was trying to pull things out of you so you could be better individually well i wasn't doing that to prove anything that i was better than you then what does that do to you right i'm pulling you i'm pulling you closer to me okay so essentially what I'm doing is everything that I have learned and studied, I, I'm giving it now. It's a form of giving, okay? The stuff that you have, the, the talents that you have, you have to learn how to give it away. Because you ain't going to have it when you're in the grave, son. When, and, and, that, and to me, my spiritual life, the, the way that I live my life is that's what, that's what you have to do. Well, that's the legacy. Yes. Yeah. Let me let me talk on that a little bit because I I specifically remember one day, uh, and I know it's probably probably said more than than one or two, and I don't even remember what year or when it was, but mm -hmm. I use it to this day, and I've said it. I had to cover somebody's classroom because I see kids, and to, to kind of blend all this together, like I see kids as part of my job. I promise you, just I see sixth grade all the way to eighth grade. Sixth grade is terrified of eighth grade. Yeah. Ninth grade oh, yeah. is terrified of twelfth grade. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about tone it down like right. those eighth ninth graders that are coming in don't know what to think about you or you or even you so you know i remember one day that you posed a question or somebody had posed a question because people were just trying to be difficult and goofy and whatever and it's like what is the meaning of life right mm. you answered the question i don't know if you remember what you said but, but you said it's to get really really good at something okay share it with others so that when you are gone you live through those things Yes. And that's exactly what, what you're kind of, and, and, you know, part of teaching, we always hate this. It's like your plan period, like somebody's sick, you got to go cover. I don't have a lesson plan for that. So I have walked in like, all right, everybody, that, this happened this year. Everybody got a sheet of paper. Okay. Pop quiz. What is the meaning of life? Okay. Because I don't have anything else to say. 
And that's mm-hmm. the answer that I use. And I mm-hmm. feel like Kevin is a leader. You correct me if I'm wrong, because I use different terminology than I do. But looking at it as trying to lead young adults in the classroom, you know when to be dad. You know when to be big brother. You know, and you blend those lines because I see teachers that are great teachers. Right? They don't have relationships built with the kids. Kids don't like them. They might do mm-hmm. the work. They might have an A. They hate that hour, right? Mm-hmm. But if you can blend that into, okay, he's good at what he does. He also cares. He knows when to give, whether it's a pat on the back, tough love. Everybody's different, right? You, you learn that emotional child or that being, and you learn how to speak to them uh, in a way that is motivating. Uh, where they start to see those and you, you're starting to reciprocate that that cycle i think yeah. um it it is the the true meaning of what love is uh in, in our western society one thing that i have i have noticed is that people throw around the word love all the time yeah okay it's true you know i love this i love this person and it's just it's become homogenous and everybody thinks it means the same thing or even if they don't they don't they don't take enough time to sit around and think about it but love has many different aspects. When you look at love in the Bible, that Greek word has three meanings, and it mm-hmm. covers different things. So if you truly love somebody, there's a part of love that is a governing type of love. Okay, so if y'all were in the drum line, y'all were under me, and I made it clear. This was a complete benevolent dictatorship. I'm in control of yeah. this. Much like a classroom. Yes. Right. yes. Yeah. I'm in control of this. But there never was a time that y'all felt like this is out of control. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why is that? Beca- because you knew I'm going to make it okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That was out of love, guys. All of that's out of love. Being a brother, being a brother to you, talking to you about your problem, that's brotherly love. You know, there's different aspects of love. But when, when you talk about stuff like that, People want to throw that out like they really know what it means, but it, it, it comes from thousands of hours of thinking about it, and the, the conclusion I've come to, it, it comes to this. You have to give of yourself. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Everything that you are, you have, to, you have to let it go and let it go into somebody else in some way or some form, regardless if you're successful or not. Okay? Mm-hmm. Case in point. Uh, Southside this year, okay, my goal was to get them going. They didn't, they didn't win a trophy. They didn't get a best in class, okay? They did last year. But they all say it. We are better, much, much better. The product is better. The drum solo is great. We love what we're doing. And I poured myself into it. And they were happy. And I was happy. And mm-hmm. we were good. That's a success, guys. Yeah. That's a success. If y'all Man. never won a trophy, yeah. I would have known. Oh, this is the best drum line I've ever had. It doesn't matter what anybody said. Right. Mm-hmm. Look, I can identify with that. So I've had two uh, middle school baseball teams that I've had the pleasure of coaching. Once I was head coach, once I wasn't. One year, we went, played 20 games. I think we were 4-16. and 16. Mm-hmm. This past year, as head coach, we were 12-3. and three. I would argue, almost without a doubt, that the 4-16 and 16 team had a better attitude. They enjoyed mm-hmm. what they did, and man, we had a blast. Yeah, twelve and three was fun, but when we lost those three, everybody had bad attitudes. Mm-hmm. You know, the team that was four and sixteen, there was a unique brotherhood there. That's like, we don't care about that. Let's go play. Let's yeah. go play ball. Let's be there for each other. Let's let the scoreboard what? fall where it is. And I think that's like you're defining success in that way. That four and sixteen was a successful year, teaching mm, absolutely. kids, you know, how to do that. Now twelve and three was great too, but. There was probably some some more life lessons. You know, if you don't fail, you're not growing something. Mm-hmm. You know, you need those trials and those struggles and things to work on. You win, you tend to kind of go lighter a lot of times. Uh, but man, I, some of the best memories. I mean, I, last year was great. Had had a, these two different schools, by the way, but um, have great memories of winning. But I don't necessarily have great memories of overcoming adversity yeah. because we we just didn't really face a lot of it. You know, so if you're not, if you're not, you need to get comfortable with failing and trying different things and oh, yeah. learning that stuff. But I totally identify with that from yeah. the sports realm of life. And another hey, thing about y'all you know, that, which I didn't have a lot to do with is y'all's chemistry. Chemistry yeah. on any sort of team is essential. Yeah. It, one break in it makes it so tough. And, 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 you know, it's something that I think you, you see, and we probably had the same problem back in our day, but I think, uh, you know, having, 
having social media at your fingertips now for these kids that have grown up with it, it's, it's, it's more prevalent with them, that main character syndrome. And mm. it's, it's me. I'm the main character of this story. Mm. Everyone else is a non-playable character in my story. And that's something that you, you can't do that and be part of a sports team. You can't do, you really can't do it in the arts either. You know, it, that was something that drumline. Yeah. I, you know, we all had our strengths, you know, y'all two were, were much better at technical sticking and stuff like that than I was. I liked, I loved learning stick flare and flashes and tosses and, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't but matter. you knew how to lock in. Yeah. but very well. And it didn't matter, though. That, like, if I can do all this fancy stick flares, throws, didn't matter if I was doing it by myself. Because yeah. I'm part of a unit. I'm, I, am, I am a cog in this machine. It's not about me. It's about what we can accomplish together. Mm-hmm. And that, sh- that should be at the heart of every team, every... You know, like I, my niece is 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 in theater now. She's going to be a, a think a theater kid. That's great for her, but it's the same way in theater. You know, if unless it's a one person show, and even then, you got people off stage that are handling lighting and curtains and all this other stuff. You know, it, it you've got to be able to put the me aside and mm. put that main character syndrome to the back. This is not about me. It's about what we can do together yeah people that play sports and stuff you can definitely tell um people that have been a part of something like when you talk to them work through things with them how they just understand that you know it's not just about me main character syndrome i've actually never heard of that but i know exactly what you mean by it yeah, yeah that's, that's great that's, yeah, that's yeah. good stuff thank you guys for watching the podcast the better man with dr jared nelson don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell so you get to see every single one of the videos i post send directly to you Until the next one, guys. Peace.